He was a guest at this table one of those times, sitting in the same chair that perhaps you're sitting in today. <coughs> Remember, you're sitting in chairs from the World's Fair of 1904. Wonderful people across America. Uh, her favorite store was Marshall Fields in Chicago. You ever been to Marshall Fields, any of you? What a wonderful store with that atrium going all the way through the building with the Tiffany glass clear at the top. And they would uh, go there probably about three times a year. So it was quite a thing. So many of our wonderful things, of course, came from such places. If you meet her, one up another level. We'll be up into the upstairs hall here and share with you some more days. So open. So I truly became the honorary grandson they never got to have. And they're very active to the very end, the day before they passed away. Uh, safely, it scared me a bit some, but uh, uh, this big old Dodge they had in a 70s Dodge, and you know, it was like a boat floating down the road, and these little ladies looking through the steering wheel driving this big automobile down the road. But I never knew they'd ever have any accidents, so I think it was pretty good. I did not know the parents. I didn't live here in Abilene as a young person, so I did not know Dr. and Mrs. Seeley. Dr. Seeley passed away in 1940, uh, just a couple months from 107th. She was even older than I. Of course, I was in high school with Eisenhower as a boy, so, uh, so they were very young. Anyway, these are the grandparents, Seeley. And uh, why are they so important in this house? The oh, Seelys wow. were married Christmas Day, 1855, near Peoria, Illinois. So the first meal in this home was Christmas Day, 1905. I want to remind you of how rare it was, a hundred and some years ago, to have both parents still living to celebrate the 50th. <coughs> Young man, when you get to be six... I never used one. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, we had one when I was in in rural Kansas out there. The outhouses at Daughters, ship in there. That's the artwork just a little bit. But that's the same bathtub that this family continued to use for, for 90 some years. Remember, this family lived here 90 some years. This was the main bathroom that they would have used all of those years. The closet was a room. Really? Mrs. Cena didn't seem to care. We have 18 of them. <laughs> and wherever you see anything, it's original for it. So if you can have a window in your closet, you don't need to use mothballs. And then need to have a door into the bathroom then even from your closet. Isn't that neat? So, yeah. Anyway, it's all in original condition. Different location to call staff. You know, folks, I call and no one comes. Everything is still here. We know it's a girl's room because it's all bird's eye maple. A girl's furniture. If it had been a boy's room, it had been oak or a darker wood. And yes, girls, you said you could collect some blue eyes. You nice brown eyes. wouldn't argue over them. Oh, okay. Mrs. Seeley purchased these in New York City in 1906. So the year 2006, our youngest dolls turned 100. But of course, this year they turned 110. How old are you young ladies? 
Those are covered with brass plates on both sides of the door. Oh. No peeking through the keyholes, please. Oh. No peeking through the keyholes. And if doors are not made out of oak or mahogany, they're made out of birch. Birch is a lighter wood. You can stain it, grain it, do different things with it. Remember it. Now, was that phone for local calling or within the house? Uh, the phones that will, yeah, they were uh, they're from uh, local as well as from any phone you can call the operator. At an outline. Go on in, please, all of you. Just a guest room. You would have been assigned one of these rooms for your stay. I like this one because of the balcony. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Uh, you would have been staying, you know, of course, everybody received a formal invitation to attend some kind of an event. And you likely would have stayed several, uh, several days with these people. Remember, we always know the age of the carpets we walk on because they were all updated the same year, 1920. They're all 95, 96 years old this year. But you have so many hooks. Hat and coats. Did you realize that clothes hangers hadn't been invented yet? Mm -hmm. oh. Clothes hangers didn't come into use. Till Remember when the daughters passed away, nothing left the home. Those bobby pins really are in the drawer. Their finest jewelry, and sadly, I've never taken an inventory. Yes, while well, the dog on here. Marion is 91 years of age. She's the one that got up every morning and baked that cherry pie, those cinnamon rolls, those banana cream pie on the wood stove. Yes, the day before she passed away at 93, was still baking bread on the wood stove. She's also the concert pianist, but you can see what arthritis had done to her joints. She no longer could play as well, however, even when I knew her, she'd play, sat down and play Rachmaninoff. Her fingers just flew over those keys. She had taken from every important piano professor throughout the Midwest, from Pederoski and everyone personally. What a, di what a dynamic lady. A little lace to about here, weighed 100 pounds. You would have enjoyed Helen also, a little more contrary, a little harder to get along with, but what a business lady. And when I knew her, giving her entire life to Red Cross, hospital, church work, library, Wonderful little lady. But you folks, why in the world did they think this ought to be my bedroom? Well, they thought I liked history. I mean, truly, why do you like the old house if you don't like history? And almost everything we've talked about is from St. Louis Fair of 1904. Maybe in St. Louis. Well, everything in my bedroom came from. I believe this old farm boy from Kansas sleeps on an old English brass bed. It is 1860s, made in England. Direct lines of the Sealies coming into America. And if you think it's perfect, would you think again? <laughs> and what do you think about the old flat springs? In America, we had the slats with the bed, you know, the springs set on the glasses. That's all the original dating back 112 years now Fantastic. when all this was made. So. Yes, we don't have those gorgeous carpets and wall coverings and fresco designs on the ceilings. But they're still nice after 111 years anyway. Whereas furniture, of course, is all original. But you know what we do have is all the picture and bowl sets for all 11 bedrooms, all that, all English china. Mm -hmm. Almost nothing has chips on it. It's just absolutely <coughs> delicious. Yes, I think the house is as kept as, uh, as well as it can possibly do after all these years. You know, my very favorite thing. Well, it's kind of winter yet. The sun is well south of us. As we get into June, July, August, that sun sets directly west of us. And as the sun starts touching the top of the trees, throws direct rays through the prism, do you know what happens? The whole room turns earth and goes into one little dresser cloth. We probably have a thousand of them. All original by staff, by the Sealies and so forth. Yes, Helen would certainly tell you we didn't need a television. <laughs> we didn't need a television, so. Uh, you know, these bedrooms, I've been thinking maybe I should have a different bedroom once in a while. I'll be right behind you. Be seated, please. It's one surprise after another. So 
So ladies and gentlemen, 100 plus years ago, you would have received a formal invitation to attend some kind of an event here. That may have been just a wonderful meal in the dining room. I cannot imagine us ladies having formal meals in your dining room four to five nights a week. Mm -hmm. 16 to 18 people, common. Oh yes, they had staff, but look at the, look at the work. You know, Mrs. Celia, she was the one that really would have ordered in most of the food and all of these things herself, you know. So it was a busy place. So it may have been, you may have been invited to just to a wonderful meal in the dining room. <coughs> Goddard reminded me that their parents had an orchestra under contract almost every evening for the guests. Can you imagine a home in Abilene, Kansas having an orchestra? I remind you, the street you've been up and down out here, it was a mud hole. <laughs> and cattle were literally being driven down the street to the railhead here, and they had an orchestra playing for their guests. Wow. So as you were be uh, seated, the orchestra... <laughs> Well, you have clothes shoots of different places. To, to sure. If you throw your shoe down there, we pick it up four stories below into the laundry room. <laughs> Hopefully. Hopefully. And the telephone system you see here out the house is directly by Thomas Edison, the phone directly made by the Kellogg Corporation. Uh, but it has a switchboard on the side. You plug in, push that little black button, it would automatically ring another phone. Or if you put it over here and push it, it ring the operator. And any phone you call the operator. It's really neat that all these old uh, radiators are still fully in use here, literally 111, 112 years later. All kinds of neat uh, things and stories, of course, about the house. Our bathroom up here, there's a big reason there wasn't any. Would you believe we're higher than the water tower? Oh. Towns grew up along the railroad track. That's downtown, we're on the hill, we're on the third floor on the hill. So pitcher and bowls and chamber pots were used originally on this level. But there is even, even a bigger question. How in the world did you get the trunks up to all these levels? People didn't have suitcases. They traveled with trunks on the trains. Everybody had trunks. How'd you get them up to this level? Well, half of what is our modern bathroom today was an elevator. This house is a winter day. I didn't make a trip down that weekend because in three or four days, I'm coming down to legally buy the house. Helen Seeley, right after lunch that day, calls up to my home and said, I'm so sorry to have to make this call. And I said, what is wrong, Miss Seeley? I'm sorry to tell you there's been a fire at the house. I'm sure I didn't overreact. What are you talking about? <laughs> well, she said, uh, I said, is there damage? And she said, there is a lot of damage. It seemed to start in the elevator. 
vocal, however, and said, my machine doesn't work very well anymore. Well, we had them serviced every year. I want to say, Miss Seeley, I think it's your ankles or knees, but I didn't say that. Look at this big ironing board. It is for the long dresses of a hundred years ago. Remember, this house could not be more wider, modern, wired for 220. Underground wiring coming to it. All light fixtures, everything's by Edison. Size. Even all that Edison did, Edison had not invented the plug-in yet. You screwed out a light bulb and screwed this in the light bulb socket. Interesting. Oh, really? Okay. Most fixtures had long, you know, you screw out. The daughters, Helen Marion reminded me that their mother had a working relationship with GE, General Electric. She said to them, I will be using all new General Electric products, but I will not screw out a light bulb to use them. She made General Electric come up with boxes all over the house. Like we would plug-ins today. If you're going to have an appliance, you surely don't have to screw out a light bulb to use it. Mm -hmm. She made them come up with these little boxes, so these are all over the house. Oh. Any known appliance would have been one there. Quite childproof, a little fingernail, get that open. Remember, this turns around, screw it right in there. They're called wall sockets. Helen and Marion, the daughters, call them hot pockets. Hot pockets? Mm -hmm. Don't stick your finger in the hot pocket, you're going to get chopped. Be careful on the stairways, folks. Fantastic. But you notice, I do go first, so if anybody falls, I will catch it. <laughs> I will catch you. Well, if you're going to be the next one to live here, we'll see if you want to update the kitchen a bit. But I remind you, I have updated because you don't see the wood stove. Oh, no. the That's not a wood stove. It's not a wood stove. It's a gas stove. Oh, a big old wood stove with a pipe going across to the chimney, and this gas stove is over that gas stove. That's what they were using. And I did leave the wood stove to both of them passed away. Then I had to decide what do, can I do to update but yet leave it as close to original as possible. Remember, I have lots of beta glue groups, PEO, uh, DAR groups, all kinds of things I've got going all the time. And we're always doing just some limited cooking for these people. I'm not going to use a wood stove. It went to the lower level. Got a little newer gas stove. But girls, I think it might have been me yet. Indiana. You kids are bright. Somebody yesterday said Oklahoma. <laughs> However, that would be a Sooner cabin. That would be a Sooner cabin. Because your cabinets were made in a little town called Newcastle, Indiana, always sold by Munger and Ward, Sears. Always made out of oak. But look what the Sealies did. They painted to go with the color scheme immediately. So it was never left in the beautiful oak. Did you have one? You knew what it was? Did you, mom and grandmother have it? My husband would refinish. Oh, okay. Well, this is a true Hoosier. And look at all the features in these Hoosiers. Nice sugar bins, flour bins, sister belt right in, carousel for your spices right at your fingertips. Always came with larger containers, coffee, tea, rice, things like that. Turn them over and says, The Hoosier Cabinet Company. Not one item has been broken in this cupboard. Remember, it's as old as this house. It's a 111, 112-year-old cupboard. You go to an antique shop, in fact, price things like this, you won't take them home with you. These are so expensive that you can find them. Isn't it wonderful? Nothing has chips or anything on them, and they're all original to when this cupboard was built. If you were having trouble getting flour, you can open up, see how much flour you got in the bin. Top opens up, no flour in. We've got some storage up above it. We have more storage here. And remember, all the way through the house, I've really been, you know. That's funny. And this is just a little bullet pencil there from the 40s. Originally, it was a little orange pencil. It said the Hoosier Cabinet Company on it, and I'm going to admit something to you. I burned it up. <laughs> I was helping Mary in here. We had the wood stove. We always had all this. Ooh, newspapers, we have flour over every place, you know, these always having double swinging doors to keep the hot part of the kitchen from the formal dining room. Sadly, we don't have the big ice box. Their ice box, folks, fill this whole wall. 
Think of this. Their icebox was so large that it would hold 50 salads and 50 desserts all at the same time. Plated salads and plated desserts. Most people's ice boxes held maybe 50 pounds of ice, maybe 100 at the most. They're telling about 300 pounds of ice. They never emptied the pan under theirs because it was a big commercial model hooked directly to the city sewer system. Also just dripped and we went down the sewer and never had to worry about any, emptying any pans. We didn't open that door directly behind us. It goes down to an outside door. Here's David Eisenhower. And three of the six boys delivered ice to themselves. Oh, that is so neat. They delivered ice. So, and remember, the daughters were the same age as these kids. They knew all the Eisenhower boys really, really. and they visited frequently. You didn't. I didn't pick it out for you today, but up in the ballroom, I'm always looking. You know, pictures and things. And here, just the other day, I ran across a nice picture. It has Dwight D. Eisenhower's personal signature on it. You know, he'd be visiting and he'd just sign something for them. This whole house is so elegant. With Wonderful memory of you. Have, have you ever seen anything like this hot water radiator with cuts in it like this? Have you ever seen this? That's actually pretty common. I've seen them in dining rooms, but folks, you always have these in butler's pantries. Because there's a steel warming oven that slides in there with a door on it, and you'd keep like another tray of fresh dinner rolls ready to rush around the corner for your guests. They're not, if not very warm, it was still running a little earlier this, mo this morning, but uh, any floral arrangements. Girls, wouldn't it be fun to have part of your staff, two ladies would come in fairly early in the morning and their only job was to update floral arrangements throughout the house. That's all the job, that's all they had to do. And the daughters, Hal Mary remembered their mother calling, we had three early flower shops here, of course they had big cutting gardens out here in the early days too. Three early flower shops. And the daughters remembered their mother calling them and said, we'll take We have, think of this, 50 to 60 frogs in this house. <laughs> we use styrofoam now, but they sit in there to assemble flower steps. They're called frogs because they sit in the water. They might look like this. They may be, everything is howling from oh, wow. France. Uh, we do have six major sets. Our largest set is 90. This is, we have three ways to the basement. This is uh, the bathroom that staff would have used here. This is the only bathroom that's never been updated. Look at this. Look at Still that. has the oak tank, which had a little brass plunger. Oh. Let the water out of the tank. It's been crippling more than 111 years. It never gives you any trouble. Works absolutely perfectly. Mrs. Cena did not want staff that was wasteful, so only on this thing do we have water saver faucets. <laughs> when you let go of them, they shut themselves up. 